So we are now ready to look at another algorithm called quicksort. So quicksort was invented by a computer scientist called Tony Hoare in the early 1960s, that's about 50 years ago. And uh, Tony Hoare is a very well-known computer scientist and he has in fact won the Turing Award which is one of the uh, highest achievements awarded for academic computer scientists. So what is the purpose of quicksort? Well, the purpose of quicksort is to overcome some of the shortcomings that we saw in merge sort, right? So one of the things that we saw in merge sort is that because of the merge operation, we need extra storage and so this makes merge sort a little expensive. So we also observed that the reason that we need this extra storage is because we have in the merge operation that we might be pulling out elements from both sides when we are populating the merged array. So basically some elements on the right might be smaller than some elements on the left and this is what results in merging. So can we divide everything so that this doesn't happen? Everything on the left is smaller and everything on the right is larger. Right? Is it possible to do a divide and conquer in this fashion? Well, if this is the case, then what we need to do is we need to put the middle value in the center. Right? So supposing we can find the median. So remember what the median is. The median is the value such that exactly half the values in the array are bigger and half are smaller. So now we move everything which is smaller than m to the left half. So we have a set of values here which are less than or equal to m. And then we have on the right side something which is strictly greater than. Right? So the, we, of course we have to do this shifting but the claim is that we can do this shifting in linear time and we will see a way to do this. So assuming we can do this, pick a value m which is the median and shift everything smaller than m to the left, then this is roughly going to be the half point because m is a value which splits the array into two parts. Those which are smaller are half and those which are bigger are half. Now I do this recursive thing, I sort this and I sort this and now remember there is no need to merge because everything on the left is already smaller than everything on the right. So I can just go ahead and assume the array is sorted. So if I do this, then by the same analysis as for merge sort, I have a recurrence which is t of n is 2 times t m by 2 plus n and we know that this is order n log n. So this will give us the same complexity as merge sort, but it will avoid some of the overheads involved with creating extra space because when I do the recursive call here, I can easily sort this part in place and this part in place because I don't need to refer to the other part at all when I do the solution. So of course there must be a catch and the catch is how do we find the median? Right at the beginning of our discussion we said that one of the reasons that we want to sort is to do statistical things like find the median. So if we have sorted the array then the median value is the middle value. But of course our goal now is to sort the array. So we can't assume that we have the median because we have already seen that sorting is an easy way to find the median so it's kind of a chicken and egg problem. We can't use the median to sort. Right? So what Quick sort, Tony Hoare's algorithm says is, don't necessarily pick the medium, just pick some value in A and do what we said before. So you pick up this pivot and then you break it up into two parts, those which are smaller than the pivot and those that are bigger than the pivot. Right? So the pivot is just some value in there, it need not be the median. Okay? And we will see that if it is not the median then this results in some problems in terms of the worst case complexity but let's just ignore it. So we just pick some value in the array and we take all those values that are smaller than that move it to the left, all those which are bigger than that move it to the right and then we sort them recursively and then we are guaranteed that nothing on the left needs to be combined with anything on the right after this so the resulting array is sorted. Okay? So this is quick sort. Choose a pivot element. So for example you might just pick up the very first value in the array as a pivot element. Partition this array into the lower and upper part. So the lower part is those which are less than the pivot. The upper part is that which is greater than the pivot. Right? So the crucial step is this partitioning. We will see how to do this. How do you do this partitioning? That is what we will see now. Okay? Then we move this pivot here so that it is in the correct place. Right? And now we recursively sort this part and this part and we are done because nothing needs to move. So here is a kind of high level description of the algorithm okay, through an example. So supposing this is my array, then I pick the first element as a pivot namely 43. So with respect to 43, I now partition this array so that everything smaller than 43. So what are the elements smaller than 43 here? We have 32, 22 and 13. So these, ele uh, so these elements 
should come to the left and the elements which are bigger namely 78 63 57 91 should go to the right so i do this partitioning right and how do i do this partitioning well i kind of okay so i i brought everything to the left okay and then after this i recursively sort the left so this is no longer assumed to be sorted it's just as everything smaller than 43 this is not sorted there's everything bigger than but then recursively if i assume i can sort it then I have sorted the entire array because now nothing in the yellow side needs to be combined with anything on the green side. The red pivot value separates these two. Okay. So the first thing that we need to understand is how to do this partition. So there are two ways to partition. So we will look at one in detail and show some code for it and then we will look at another through an example and you will have to write the code yourself if you are interested. So here is one way to partition. So I start with the pivot element at the left and now I have this entire range of values to the right which are unsorted. Right? So I will put two indices which I will indicate in this picture with two colored pointers, a yellow pointer and a green pointer. The significance will become a little clearer once we move a couple of steps into the algorithm. So what we do is that everything to the right of the green pointer, okay, so the green pointer indicates the end of the part which has already been partitioned. So anything to the right of the green pointer is going to be, so anything to the right of this green pointer is unpartitioned. And the yellow pointer on the other hand is going to indicate, so this is going to indicate the limit of the, of the lower part, right. So I need, so basically in general I am going to have this, this picture. So I'm going to have the pivot here, okay. then I'm going to have the lower part here, which I've already found. Then I'm going to have the upper part here. So these are the elements I've already scanned and partitioned. And then I have the part that is to do. Right? So in the beginning, everything is to do and there's no lower part, there's no upper part. So what I'm saying is that we will keep these pointers like this, right? So this thing will point to the end of this and this thing will point to the end of this. So this is what we want to achieve. So we start as I said with this picture. So what we do is if we see something which is lower then I extend the lower part and I move to the next element. Okay. Again we see something which is lower so we extend the lower part. So at this point what we are saying is that the lower part has two values 32 and 22 and the upper part is empty and everything from 78 onwards is not sorted. Now I look at 78, so 78 is bigger than 43, so the lower part stays here and I now have a non-empty upper part, namely 78. Now I look at 63, once again 63 belongs to the upper part, so again I move this forward. 57 again belongs to the upper part, so I move it forward. 91 again move it forward. So the first interesting thing happens when I come to 13. So now when I come to 13, I find that it must go into the lower part. But the lower part is far away. So how do I achieve this? So what I will do is I know that this element to the right of the lower pointer, so this is bigger than P, right? And this element is smaller than P. So one way to achieve what I need is to exchange these two values, right? So I exchange the 13 and 78, right? So I take 13, I label it as lower, and then I exchange and move both pointers, right? So this is a forward partitioning algorithm which keeps reducing the length of the unpartitioned part. Okay. If I see something which is upper, I just move the green pointer. If I see something that is lower, I exchange that lower element with the first part of the upper thing and then I exchange, I extend both partitions. And then finally, at this point, I still don't have the final thing because I want this pivot element to be in between these two. Okay. So now the point is that I know that this is the last so the, what is to the right of the yellow pointer is the first upper limit and what is to the left of the yellow pointer is the last lower thing. So I can exchange the 43 and the 13, right? And then I get the final array partitioned as I want with the pivot in the middle, the lower part on the left, the upper part on the right, okay? So this is how we do quick sort in general. So in general, now remember that after we do this partitioning, we are going to have to quick sort this part and quick sort this part. So the recursive calls will be sort, sorting, sorting different segments. So it's useful to say for each call that I'm sorting from some left limit to some right limit. Okay. So in general, quick sort will take the array and it will take two pointers. It will say sort from L to R minus 1. Okay. Now if this length is 
small in other words if i have only one value if r minus l is less than or equal to 1 if either i have only one value or if i have no values to sort then i do nothing so this is the base case so this is a recursive algorithm if the sorting array to be sorted as only one element you do nothing otherwise using the terminology of the previous uh, example we use the yellow to be indicate the position of the yellow pointer and we use green to indicate the position of the green pointer okay so these two variables indicate the position of these two arrows okay so remember that we start to the right of the pivot so initially we have at the position l we have the pivot and r minus 1 is the last index so this is our pivot p so our initial thing is to say that put both these pointers here right so initially yellow is l plus 1 so that is this position okay and we start now moving the green so green starts at l plus 1 and goes until r so if we see that the green value is smaller than the pivot so this is the pivot right so a of l is the pivot so if the green value the value i'm looking at under the green pointer is smaller then i do this exchange right so if i'm here somewhere and i have this green value then what happens is if this is smaller then i exchange these two values so that's what this is saying swap a the position the element at position yellow and the element at position green in a should be swapped and then i will also increment the yellow pointer the green pointer is being incremented anyway at every loop right so finally after this loop right i have done this partitioning to the extent where i have the pivot element i have the lower part and the upper part and now what i want to do is i want to move the pivot to the center so at this point i have the yellow pointer here and the green pointer here right okay? so i need to take the last element here and exchange it with the pivot and that's what this is doing is saying exchange the position value at position l with the value at position yellow minus 1 now having done this now i want to recursively sort so i want to sort from the beginning l up to and to the left of this yellow pointer so i sort from a from l to yellow and then i want to sort everything on the right so i start at yellow plus 1 and sort until r okay so these are the two recursive calls but now the important thing is that at this point everything between l and yellow is smaller than the pivot everything beyond l yellow plus 1 and up to r is bigger than the pivot so after these two sorting sub uh, uh, recursive calls to quick sort nothing more needs to be done we are done so as i said this partitioning strategy can also be implemented in a different way and in fact this is the original partitioning strategy proposed by tony hort so in his original strategy the idea was to not start from one end and sweep until you claim all the elements but to start at opposite ends so you start building up in some sense the you start building up the lower side from here and you start building up the upper side from here and gradually the lower side grows until it can expand no more and the upper side grows and then everything is in place and then you do the final swap as before so here what you do is you start with again i will use the same color thing so yellow refers to lower green refers to upper so what i will do is i will take the yellow pointer and keep scanning until i find a value which is not yellow so 32 is smaller than 43 so remember that we are trying to grow the yellow partition is the lower partition so we're trying to include in the lower partition everything smaller than 43 and we're trying to include in the upper partition everything which is bigger than 43 so i keep moving the yellow thing until i find the first error in some sense so 32 is okay so i skip over it 22 is also smaller than 43 so i skip over it and now i reach a value 72 so at this point my partition ends here and 72 cannot be included because it's bigger than 43 now i start on the right hand side and i look for the position where i can include things in the upper thing but the very first thing i see 13 should not be there right so at this point our up, upper limit is here so now what i do is i exchange these two values right so if i exchange these two values then this will become 13 this will become 78 right and then i will be able to shift these two boundaries by one right so this is the basic step in this partitioning strategy so at the next step what i do is i exchange the 13 and 78 and now i say that i have a lower thing up to here and i have an upper thing up to here so this is the invariant now we have the lower thing on the left half the upper thing on the right part 
and in between we have the unsorted elements but we have these two indicators the leftmost unsorted guy and the right, uh, leftmost unpartitioned element and the rightmost unpartitioned element so now again i start doing the same thing i move the yellow right until i can no longer extend lower here i can't extend it anyway because 63 should already not be there so i cannot move this partition on the other hand the upper partition can move because 91 is bigger so i will move it left okay 57 is still bigger so i'll move it left again 63 is still bigger so i move it left again and now i find that the right partition indicator has moved to the left of the left partition indicator so when this exchange happens then it terminate this partition so when the the right boundary crosses the left boundary then we have finished partitioning all the elements because there is nothing in between the two elements to be partitioned anymore so once we have terminated now we have the same problem as before which is that we want to move this element to the center but now remember that at this point when this thing terminates the right marker is pointing to the end point of the lower limit so i can just exchange these two so i exchange the 13 and the 43 so i take this there and move this here and then i get my answer okay so if i move this and then i simultaneously move the green pointer now i have a pointer to the last of the lower elements i have a pointer to the first of the upper elements and now i can apply quick sort recursively to this part and to this part and i'm done right so we will not write pseudo code or uh, describe this algorithm in more detail but you can definitely try and work out a similar way of keeping these indices moving as we did for the earlier partitioning and see if you can get it right this is also discussed in many of the books so both these partition algorithms appear in textbooks and you can choose whichever one you find easier in both cases remember that there's basically an invariant condition there are these two markers and these two markers indicate the part which has already been partitioned the limits of the lower and the upper part and then there is an unpartitioned part and when the unpartitioned part becomes empty you are done